Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 1, Episode 9. Thoughts? This episode is called Repairs. So, spoilers for the MCU leading up to and including this episode. No spoilers for anything later in the MCU. Another episode I love. Before I dig in, the top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the SAG After Strikers. I implore you to do so. And then there are some links to videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. So, let's get into it. So, yeah, the... Yeah, we open on the the you know uh, Hannah is being blamed you know for the the accident at the plant, which means she's you know she basically she can't buy the groceries there because she gets confronted. Which, you know, this is sadly something that happens, uh, you know, and, yeah, it's especially, you know, once you've watched the entire episode and you realize it absolutely was not Hannah's fault, uh, yeah, but that is, you know, uh, yeah, that is a, a, the, the, I'm torn, because on the one hand, a lot of men will blame women who are innocent when something goes wrong but on the other you know when something goes wrong at this you know at a place like that it often is that someone was not doing their job and and taking care of the the safety of yeah and I, I quite appreciate, like, early scenes legitimately, like, before you know what's going on, it could easily be read as Hannah is a Stephen King character. She's a young psychic who can't control their powers yet. You know, it's... And, and as such, whenever someone, you know, when, yeah, when in stressful situations... Yeah, and, and, you know, I've only watched the episode once, but I'm guessing if I watched it again, yeah, it would work out to, yeah, he's, you know, teleporting between worlds. And, yeah, um, as was pretty clear at the end of last episode, May and Ward were indeed having going to have hotel sex and we learn that this is not the first time and May is completely like you know she does she doesn't feel a need to to talk to the others uh, to uh, wires got crossed she does not feel the need to talk to Ward and you know yeah the thing that he said they do end up doing you know showing up you know in not not leaving at the exact same time and later she's like you're late which you know that me thinks the lady doth protest too much that was very like did everybody else notice that i was the one who who said that he was late that isn't the kind of thing you would say to someone that you're having sex with i don't think they're just you know that was and i i appreciate that you know sky from right away is expressing a lot of empathy uh, you know ver verbally when when talking to to colson whereas colson is basically he sees hannah as dangerous and nothing else you know and by the end of the episode he does say that he thinks that in the long term sky can become one of the best at bringing in assets for the index and <laughs> sky's nickname for ward and may is warm and fuzzy that's yeah and yeah you know we we see that the they they are really a bunch of religious freaks the, the idea that 
you know, something... They, they legitimately can't imagine that Hannah is not doing this on purpose, the, the small town. And May Night Nights, Hannah, and... I thought they did a good job, you know, gradually increasing the tension and suspense of that scene. The the way that, like, you know, at, at first, like, the cop is just like, hey, it's a free country, they're allowed to be, you know, and, like, immediately we as the viewer are like, dude, they are threatening her, get them out of there, you know, but clearly the cop agrees with them and not with her. You know, and and near the end, you know, the cop draws his gun on Hannah. You know, and the the yeah, I I kind of said everything I wanted to about that scene. So yeah, um, Fitzsimmons talk about you know, oh, we didn't get to to prank anyone, but Sky is essentially. Of uh, you know what, what's the word freshman? Uh, you know, so they they tell her this ridiculous story about the, the why Melinda May is the cavalry, and Sky is even like, is this real? <laughs> but ultimately, she does appear to to buy it, and <laughs> apparently. I, I will say, I, I've always wondered, so I appreciate that it was answered. Apparently, you have to do two semesters of holographic something or other before you are allowed to interact with, with the hologram. So, yeah, he, he won't let Sky do that, and... You know, Sky says she'll go deal with her. You know, she'll get on her laptop, boring old flat computer, and do my own research. Now, in case you like me are watching this episode today, back then, do my own research did literally mean that. You know, I I know conservatives ruin everything, including language. Now, the moment you hear someone say do their own research, it's like, oh my God, you're not gonna take even the bare minimum of, like, you're not gonna do anything to try to stop the spread of COVID, but you are gonna Google until you feel justified in ignoring the scientific consensus. Let's see, and, yeah, and, and you know, Hannah, I, I do appreciate the self-awareness. She says, you're not going to believe me, and she's right. You know, God is punishing me. He has stopped protecting me against demons. I really don't know what passengers that are on, like, public airplanes, not private planes, have to do with these telekinetic attacks, but, you know, whatever. Or maybe she's, like, talking about how apparently some Christians think, oh, you know, trans people are demonic, and that's why if we abuse them, they get upset. Which is just, like, wow. No, seriously, there's people who believe that. Melanie Mack included. <laughs> I like that the Sky thinks, um, May just needs to get laid. And, and, you know, Ward, like, stops in the middle of just... And, and I appreciate the detail that, you know, certainly a lot of sandwiches can do with just a, just a little bit of, of pepper. Not disputing that. But it was intentional that the thing he was in the process of doing as he was making a sandwich, which there's a lot of... You know, it's a it's a detailed process. A lot of steps to that. The thing he was in the middle of doing was he's he's got the big like long you know round pepper grinder and he's like he's got that in both hands and he's he's like manipulating that. That was an intentional. I I, I see what you did there and I appreciate it. And 
Yeah, um, Ward's story is substantially less ridiculous than Fitzsimmons, but his is almost definitely also BS. I appreciate that the before it becomes clear what's going on, we do see Tobias teleporting, you know, out of focus. We don't get a really good view at first. And, yeah, he's, you know, a portal to hell. Oh, so this is Event Horizon. And he cuts the power and crashes the plane. Really, like, yeah, that that escalated quickly. I mean, that really went fast. And Fitz is locked in the... inside the, the thing. And... and yeah, there was there was some some fun with that. I I quite like that this is basically a ghost story episode. You know, it turns out that it's not that, but like you have these dimly lit creepy shots. You know, the characters are are separated and and isolated, becoming like locked in rooms, and you know suddenly something will have disappeared off screen and sometimes just straight up like poltergeist stuff like at the start of the episode when everything like flies at the, the store owner and, you know just yeah they they do a really good job like clearly someone working on the show was like you know what we should do we should do a ghost story episode and they did a very good job i'm i'm quite uh, yeah and yeah, Sky tries to comfort Hannah by saying, you know, the one thing that stuck with me was was God is love, and I I do appreciate that Sky doesn't lie to her and say, oh yeah yeah God, great guy, he's definitely you know one hundred percent like I I am not the slightest bit surprised that her character does not believe in God. And, yeah, and they talk about, you know, oh, the, the portals like Thor 2. And, yeah, very, very tense and suspenseful episode. And <laughs> at first I thought that the, the story Coulson tells AC was also BS, but by the end of the episode, it seems like at least some of it is actually true. And I like that Melinda May disappeared on Tobias. That was very, very cool. Um, yeah, big thumbs up for, for that. Just, yeah. And they actually do use the, the radio from the wristwatch. And, yeah, and, and, you know, I think it's Sky points out, wait, Tobias is, like, childish. You know, he's not trying to hurt Hannah, he's trying to protect her. And, yeah, and, and Tobias asks Hannah, you know, for forgiveness, and being a good Christian, she says no. That was that was very very honest of the episode to acknowledge, but yeah, and and may also, you know, yeah, I'm not gonna butcher it by by misremembering, but she's got a great monologue, and yeah, then she's you know, Coulson asks, what did you say to him, and you know, she replies, what you told, what you said to me in Bahrain. And, you know, we, we learned earlier in the episode that originally, uh, you know, oh not, yeah, not early in the episode, but before the very end, we, we were told that Melinda May actually liked to do pranks before Bahrain, and, you know, at the end we see that she did do a, a prank again on, on Fitz, who... 
walks right in and, and announces to everyone instead of, you know, maybe just cleaning up and pretending nothing happened. But yeah, that's... <laughs> I 100% I believe that for the for the character. I think that is everything I have to say. Uh, I like that the so much of this episode is just the the I, th I think maybe like half of the episode is really just our team of shield agents. And then Hannah and Tobias, like, it's not, they're not constantly going places, talking to people who have to do with, you know, a lot of it is just them, you know, yeah, a lot of time on the plane and later on the ground. Uh, I, I really appreciate this, this note of, you know, this, this clumsy, straight, this white man who just, you know, he likes a girl and he, you know, yeah, ends up doing something really dangerous and destructive to to try to, you know, because he wanted to spend more time with her. You know, that is sadly, you know, yeah, happens a lot, needs to get called out, only way that we're able to, to stop it. I know sometimes when when we white guys get called out online, like, some people are like, well, you know, I, I can't change, you know, I'm always going to be white. Yeah, you're not being asked to not be white. You're being asked to acknowledge the privileges that we white men have the and, and to try to help just... You're not being asked to do something that's impossible. Now, um, that might be what I had to say. Yeah, they, they do a very good job this episode legitimately making it feel like, oh, you know, how are the, how are the heroes actually going to be able to, to win this one? You know, how do you stop what you can't see? And, and yeah, like the fact, you know, we spend so much of the episode, like, you could easily see how this episode could have been told from Tobias's point of view, and I'm really glad that it wasn't, because there's so much media that takes a story similar to this, not in all the details, but like the, you know, like, from his point of view, He's just, you know, he just wants to, to make a positive impression on her. He wants to spend more time with her. He messed up, and now, you know, people are scared, and people are trying to hurt her, and he's just trying to protect her. But for most of the episode, all we see is that she's scared. You know, almost all of her screen time, Hannah is scared. And that's the reality of, you know, if you are this clumsy white guy who does not know how to be, you know, yeah, I, I really appreciate that the, the, that they made the choice to, to tell the story from, from, you know, f focusing more on her side of it than his. Um, I think that might be, and, you know, yeah, I, I joked earlier Ultimately, no, I, I don't think he... I, I appreciate that he wasn't doing the bad things on purpose, but at the end of the day, he did still do bad things, and he kept doing them. You know, the the, the fact that he had good intentions, you know, no, I, I'm not saying I'm God, just godly. Yeah. I probably wouldn't forgive him either. And we know Yahweh is not big on forgiveness. Pretty, pretty happy to kill you if you make even the tiniest little mistake. So I don't think he has a lot of... There's not There's not a lot of chance. It's pro probably best to just resign yourself to the fact that that is not going to happen. 
Right, I, I did find it very fun to see Fitzsimmons play off each other as like, you know, oh, they were almost 100, they were over 100, they were over 100, you know, and just legitimately ridiculous story. You know, she rode in on a horse, a gun in each hand, took them all out without any, just, you know, completely ridiculous, and I, Sky is not the most skeptical person, so I suppose she, her buying it does jive with her characterization in the episodes leading up to this. But that is it for this one. So, yeah. Um, uh, that, yeah, the next episode I will cover sometime tomorrow and until then I am gonna go ahead and get two semesters of holographic engineering in order to get in on that game make my marble